a traumatic bond is something that occurs when you are in an abusive relationship, such as one with a narcissist and the abuser becomes an essential part of your life. Narcissistic abuse is life changing and life changing abusive relationships are common and the statistics are absolutely alarming. Violence, abuse and other issues that happen in abusive relationship cycles, living with or sharing a space with an abuser is not always bad all the time, nor always good. And if you are treated poorly throughout your relationship the whole time, like 100%, it's likely that you would not have stayed. And there are many, many abusive relationships where the abuser treats the abused kindly and at times, uh, obviously, uh, very abusively. And th this is usually after an abusive incident that the abuser will treat the victim kindly. And the abused, they learn to follow the rules of their abuser or their abuser in the next relationship. Um, but the reality is abuse, domestic violence, and any mistreatment is not real love. Okay, so traumatic bonding. It is a phenomenon in which a victim feels connected to their abuser based on attachment and hormones that are being activated during the time of abuse. And during the stressful points within the relationship, the victim has very high, very elevated levels of cortisol. And the victim feels like they're on edge, thinking that they may, they're constantly thinking that they may be abandoned by their abuser if they don't listen to them, if they don't look a certain way, act a certain way, and they're desperately seeking this reward hormone, dopamine, which is a pleasure chemical. And when the abuser gives the, evict the victim uh, kindness and affection, it further reinforces the trauma bond. This is a biophysical, it, it, this is physiological. Uh, and this reinforces that traumatic bonding. And how do you break this cycle? This is very, very difficult to break, as all of you probably know. The victim can seek help. You can seek help in the form of therapy, individual coaching, beginning to take steps to leave the relationship safely and then heal from the trauma. You do not have to go through this alone. Survivors and perpetrators of narcissistic abuse, domestic violence, any form of abuse will often form trauma bonds whereby they both become hooked into the relationship and this can make it extremely difficult for the survivor to unlock his or herself from the relationship and escape the abuse trauma bonding happens when an abuser provides the survivor with an inner intermittent reinforcement intermittent rewards and punishments so a psychological conditioning develops and the survivor becomes snared into the relationship ever hopeful of the next reward looking for that dopamine hit and a reprieve from the suffering so powerful emotional bonds develop um, that are these are extremely resistant to change and trauma bonding involves this cycle of abuse following an abusive incident a series of incidents the perpetrators they will often start behaving kindly towards the victim and oft offer a kind gesture and try to recover the situation. This is uh, the, the cycle of abuse. A period of reactive peace can follow before the tension it builds and then the abuse inevitably starts again. So survivors in that intermittent period will try their best not to anchor their partner to do everything expected of them. And they will remember how loving their partner was in the early days of the relationship, hoping for a return to that behavior. And they think that they just need to work out what they're doing wrong to bring back that loving part of their relationship. But it never occurs to us when we are in this that we that we're that this was always manipulative and it was never genuine and that the partner our narcissist were never capable of real romantic love trauma bonding has similarities with stockholm syndrome where people held captive develop feelings of trust 
and affection towards their captors. Both trauma bonding and Stockholm syndrome are survival strategies that develop to help an emotionally or physically dangerous um, situation. And women will hold on to toxic and abusive relationships and become more vulnerable to trauma bonding for a variety of reasons. And survivors who are raised in an abusive households are too more vulnerable from to trauma bonding and an abusive relationship may seem the, like the norm and acceptable to them because this is how th this is their normal this is their baseline uh, due to how they were raised and the, this is one reason why it's so important for parents to model healthy relationships in front of their children at least in front of them women and men raised with abuse will also likely to be likely to have lower self-esteem less expectation of being treated well in a relationship and being in this abusive relationship will sometimes point to the person that they they believe they do they they deserve the abuse and the abuse becomes the normal but dis despite making this person happy they may stop aspiring to do anything better as they don't feel worthy of love they don't feel worthy of accomplishing anything and the longer that the the victim remains with the narcissist the more difficult it is to break the trauma bond and uh, the the more that you break no contact you're kind of going back to square one with the with the trauma bond because trauma, fear, and abandonment, they actually increase feelings of attachment. The more that you have been hurt by this person, the more intensely attached you will be as trauma bonds are hard to break, but even harder to live with. People in trauma bonds will tend to blame themselves for their partner's abusive behavior. They will agree with the with them, with the abuser or the narcissist when they tell him or her that they wouldn't co they can't cope without the narcissist and that they're not good enough and that they made them do this or they made them angry and that they wouldn't need to punish the victim if they didn't act a certain way or if they tried harder and they the the victim will make excuses for their abuser and they'll say things like oh he or she had a difficult childhood his mother didn't love him and it's understandable why he gets so angry and he or she will think that if they can stop being stupid because their abuser has called them this so many times that they will stop getting angry and if they try harder show more affection and never doubt their abuser that things will eventually be fine now when a victim if a victim does manage to get free from the trauma bond the abuser will commonly revert back to the idealization or the love bombing stage a courtship that that phase to win the victim back over again and of course the victim is still trauma bonded and extremely vulnerable to these efforts the more that the victim reaches out in this period for the to the abuser for love and recognition and approval the more that trauma bond is strengthened and this also means that the abused will go back and stay in the relationship when the abuse eventually escalates and it will get worse as perpetrating the destructive cycle uh, because because the abuser is the one abusing and making the victim feel terrible, they the victim will often see him or her as the only person to validate him or her to make them feel okay again. Although the survivor might disclose the abuse, the trauma bond also means that the victim is seeking to receive comfort from the very person who abused them. And escaping a trauma bond is notoriously difficult and professional help is 100% of the time recommended as this is not something that you could go through alone in my opinion. And the following steps can help to liberate you from this destructive relationship. Physically separate from the abuser as soon as possible as it is essential. And although this can be difficult, it is invariably easier than the emotional separation. You must cut off all lines of communication as far as possible this is no contact this can this can be made almost impossible and if you share children however restricting communication like i've often said just to an email a moderated email platform which are is available in the united states in all states um, communicating through a third party for child care medical matters it is possible acknowledge that you have 
a choice and you had a choice and you can choose to leave the relationship. And when choice is acknowledged, you can gain control and drive your destiny with less vulnerability to further abuse. Self-reflection will enable you to understand how your character traits and vulnerabilities played a part in this codependent dance. Being abused is never your fault. However, there may be aspects of your personality that made you more susceptible to abuse. You must work out what hooked you into this abusive relationship. Was it a fantasy? Was it an illusion of a perfect future? Was it that your partner had convinced you that he or she, um, you were some deep soulmate and you, you felt the need to help them in some way and you were hoping that this person would make up for some feeling that you were lacking? Learn about the character traits of narcissistic abusers as this will help you understand what happens so you are less susceptible to future abusive relationships. Develop a support network of professionals, friends, and trusted family who will actively um, and positively support you and compassionately support you through your recovery from this trauma bond. Domestic abuse is an extremely isolating experience, but prioritizing social connections is absolutely vital for recovery. Make decisions that only support your self-care and be self-compassionate, both physically and emotionally, and don't berate yourself for mistakes. See recovery as non-linear, a work in progress, and life as a journey. Live in the present moment and notice how you are feeling right now. If you're still in the relationship, notice how trapped you feel and how scared and unloved you feel. Notice how you have compromised your self-worth for this relationship and stop hoping for things to be better in the future. But know how you are feeling. Accept how you are feeling now. Accept sadness and realize that you must grieve the end of an intensive abusive relationship. And don't expect to feel better too soon, but have confidence that better times will absolutely come. And write a list of what you'd refuse to tolerate in a relationship. For example, I will not be intimate with someone who calls me names. I refuse to be questioned every time I go out. I will wear what I like. I will not have conversations with someone when I feel desperate or obsessive. And planning out your future free from your abusive partner, make your life, make these affirming positive life choices for you and you only and your future. My name is Sarah Ann Brown, and this is Narcissistic Abuse 101.